All right, guys, so here we are looking at a support, and there's two ropes tugging on that support. Uh, we have some unknown force pulling at with rope A with, again, some unknown force at an angle above this horizontal. And then we have rope B pulling with 900 newtons of force, and that's going to be a given uh, amount of degrees below horizontal, which we can figure out from that 60 degrees there. Um, we're told that the resultant force is actually going to be horizontally to the right, like so. And it's going to have a magnitude of 1,200 newtons. So just by the setup of this problem, it's already looking like we're going to use the law of parallelograms. So why don't we go ahead and set up our parallelogram? So we'll start with that rope A, which is pointing upwards with some force F. And then we're going to have rope B with 900 newtons going somewhere in this direction. We're going to have our resultant force, I'll put that in red, going horizontally to the right. And then we're going to close out by repeating our two forces from rope A and B. So again, we're going to have a parallel force between this force and this force. They're going to be equivalent, being both equal to 900 newtons. And then rope A, once again, is going to be some unknown force F. Alright, so with those forces now displayed on our parallelogram, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to uh, put any angles that are included. So I'm going to draw a dotted line here, and that's going to be the vertical. Uh, it's going to mimic this line right over here. And we're told that we have 60 degrees between this vertical and rope B. So let's mark that here. So we have 60 degrees here. And then if we know that this horizontal force is truly horizontal. That means that we have a right angle between the um, resultant force and the vertical, right? So therefore, we know that 90 minus the 60 degrees from here should yield us with 30 degrees right there. So we have 30 degrees for that small angle of the bottom triangle there. Um, and then we know that from geometry, we have alternate angles so that this angle here is also 30 degrees. So now if we take a closer look, we know we have two triangles here, and we have basically two sides for each triangle. We have the 900 on either side, and then we have the 1200 shared by both. So let's just take a look at the top triangle so we don't get too confused. So we have a 1200, a 900, and then 30 degrees, right? So one angle and two sides. Um, luckily, that angle is actually opposite of the unknown side, so we can actually use the law of cosines. And what the law of cosine states is that one side of a triangle is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the square of the other sides of the triangle. So we'll have side A squared plus B squared minus 2 times the product of those sides times the cosine of the angle that's opposite of the unknown side. Um, so in simple terms here, what we're going to be looking for for C is going to be our unknown side here F so we'll have that F equals and it's going to be again our two other sides which is 900 and 1200 so we'll have times the square or equal to the square root of 900 squared plus 1200 squared minus 2 times 900 times 1200 times the cosine of the angle that is actually opposite of the side we're looking for, which if you look at this case, it's going to be that angle there, which is 30 degrees. So cosine of 30 degrees. And now we just close up our square root. And now if you plug this into your calculator, you'll find that the force is equal to 615.94 newtons. So now it looks like the problem's asking for the corresponding angle U for that force, but what I think they're really asking for is going to be theta, but maybe they just didn't have um, the Greek keyboard for, or a Greek character for theta, so um, we're going to be looking for theta in this case. So let's mark up our triangle here. So we have 1200 going to the right, and then we have, oops, I'll try that again, we have 600 
15.94 going in that direction, and then 900 going in that direction. And once again, we have 30 degrees. So all I really did here was I just redrew this triangle right here. Um, just wanted to make it a little bit more clear and obvious of what we're going to do here. So pretty much we have the same exact triangle, except now we have an additional piece of information. Instead of having an unknown, we have a known. So now we have three sides of a triangle and then just two unknown angles. We're only going to be looking for angle alpha, which is going to, or sorry, angle uh, theta, which is going to be right here. So if we rearrange the law of cosines, we can set our C equal to the 900, which will then make our theta equal to this angle here. Because remember that your angle theta is always opposite of your C, which means that if our C is 900, our theta is, well, our theta that is stated in the problem. So now if we just set this up, we'll have 900 as our C equals a, a squared plus b squared. We'll have 615.94 squared plus 1200 squared minus 2 times 615.94 times 1200. And that's going to be times the cosine of angle theta, which is our unknown. Now we take the square root of this whole thing. And now we have to solve for theta. So to do that, what I recommend you do is, uh, instead of plugging it into uh, your calculator, I would do some rearrangement first. So first, take the square of both sides. So we'll do 900 squared is equal to the whole mess on the right without the square root. And then from there, we can subtract 615. 615.94 squared plus 1200 squared sorry, it's going to be minus, rather, you're going to be subtracting the 1,200 squared. And now the rest of it is one expression, so we're going to divide by everything there. So we'll have negative 2 times 615.94 times 1,200, and that's going to leave us with that cosine theta. So we'll just take a cosine minus 1 of this whole expression here and that will leave us with theta. And now if you plug this whole thing into your calculator, you're gonna have that theta equals 46.94 degrees.